and I just cry. Even even today, I feel like I kind of choked up when I think of my great grandma, the fun we had with her trying to say Indian words that she'd tell us and the English words we tried to tell her and she'd laugh. You could hear her a mile away when she laughed at herself. I can remember my mother's grandmother. I thought she'd live forever. She had hundreds of baskets around her like this. She had a little place near my grandfather's place in Cal Valley. She sat there, her whole pastime was just making baskets and she made beautiful baskets. And I thought she'd live forever and I had to go to boarding school and I came back to visit my grandparents. She was gone. I never knew when she died. And the land that my uh, great grandmother cleared, it was, uh, golly, there must have been about 80, 80 acres there. And she was out before daylight every morning. My, my father was telling us this, that she was out at daybreak and she worked all day till dark. And she was no, not much bigger than me, but she was real stocky built. I loved her and uh, we went buggy riding with her whenever we could. And we'd try to teach her any English words and she'd try to teach us Indian words and they were so hard. They took everyone six on up to boarding school and we had to a pickup place where we we went up by boat. We went to the citizens dock in Bellingham and we were picked up there. And on our way to the school, they picked up the Swinomish over there by La Connor and they picked up some at Port Madison, different places anyway, before we finally got to the school. And I can remember everyone getting seasick on this boat. When we go through Deception Pass, we all had to go down into the, the inside the boat because they were afraid we might something happen and tip, tip over. But a lot of the kids were seasick by the time we got to the boarding school. What would happen if you tried to stay home? They'd uh, send the police after us. They used to, we had a superintendent for this area that was so strict that if uh, parents didn't get their s children to school on time, they had the police take them to jail and they put them in jail over here in Tulum. They had a room in the little lumber mill they had there. They had a little room where they locked them up. And they'd take them to the dining room and we'd eat with, they'd eat at one end of the dining room with us and then they'd take them back to jail. They'd get 30 days, they'd have to spend around 30 days in jail. I went to a school in Tacoma was known as the Cushman Trade School. They just uh, put me where they wanted me, which was domestic science. I couldn't go into the hospital and take the nursing course like I had planned. So I got off course and I sort of lost interest in school. And when I finished uh, Cushman, I'm a school, school dropout from there on. And uh, working for the service league, I did follow-up work where people left off of something they started, I'd pick up and carry on. And that's how I got started doing the newspaper. And so you think that it's was fun. <laughs> important for Indians to communicate and share information? Why? Well, I think that a lot of our people need to be informed of what goes on. Tell us more about your participation in communication. How, how did you get started? I used to follow one of the ladies that was a service league member uh, and help her with layouts. She taught me how to do the layouts. And then she quit. There was no one, again, to pick up where she left off. And as... Um, representative of the Indian Women's Service League, I felt I had to carry on to represent the League, and I didn't want our paper to die, so I just went on and worked on it by myself. So there were months and months where I worked alone. I'd have to take these sacks out to the mailbox and watch for the mailman and throw them on the truck, 
He says, you can't ride with me. You'll have to find your way to the post office to pay for the postage. Okay, it's all right. So as long as I get him there, then I'd take the bus and go down and pay for the postage. 